Hi, this is Rashid and today we are going to look into second part of static timing analysis or timing. So whenever I say timing, I mean static timing analysis. So let's recap how this discussion started because it's important that uh, you are able to connect dots and I'm, I'm bringing you gradually. So if this is the first video you jumped in, I think even if you just watch this one, you have some background you you will be able to understand but if you really want to understand the whole content that i'm creating in physical design it's very important that you start the journey with me um so go to the first topic un under pd or physical design and that's where i'm coming to um some of the things if if those are already you you're familiar with you can go past them quickly or maybe watch this one maybe you don't have an issue i mean for me my main audience is someone who has no idea of physical design and they know uh, digital system design, they know computer architecture, they know uh, some of the CMOS things. So now they are ready to go into physical design and I'm taking them gradually one by one. In this video, my goal is to explain you what is a timing arc and what is, it, what is a timing path and when you are inside these physical implementation tools who are optimizing timing paths but they when they are optimizing they also have a verification method inside so they do a static timing analysis within synthesis within placement within routing within cts and of course there's always a sign of sca tool too so it's important so the way i came to this topic was okay we went into synthesis we look at different stages of synthesis then we look into what are the inputs of this of the synthesis rtl is one input that is already covered um, through my challenge and i'm gonna record those videos pretty soon too the second thing is okay constraints timing and then i started with timing constraints and when I want to explain you timing constraints, so in the previous video I explained you, it's very important. So what, what are we measuring? We are measuring timing to every endpoint. So before I explain you how to constrain your design, how to create clock constraints and other constraints, it's important I tell you why we do timing verification and how is timing verification done. And when you come into timing verification, you are reading content from Sun Sun Library. So I gave you overview on Sun Sun Library, what timing information is available there. And now I'm telling you how these two read that timing information and build a timing database. And then we will look into a timing report. And then after that, we will start looking into, okay, how to constrain and what I mean by timing constraints and what are different timing of a type of timing constraint. Okay, so are you with me right now? Okay, good, very good. So this video, let's look into timing arc first. So on an inverter or buffer, uh, which is, uh, there is one input pin and one output pin. And um, this is a combinational gate, right? So there is only one timing arc. For a gate like AND gate here, okay, you have two input pin, one output pin, and there are two timing arcs okay so output is impacted or can change because of a and because of b so it depends on both a and b so that way it has timing arc with respect to both a and b we already looked inside standard cell library that for each output pin there is a section on a related pin so there's a section related pin to A and then B. And then within each of those, let's say related pin is A, output has a delay information with respect to changing slew or changing transition time at the input when there are different capacitance at the output. So there is a delay information and there was also a lookup table which says, okay, the transition time at the output depends on what two things the capacitance attached to this node and the transition time on the input. So once we have this capacitance and this transition time, we can through standard cell library reading that the tool will determine the transition time here and will also determine uh, what is the delay. 
does this signal appear at the same time as this one or it appears a bit late and if it late how much late and exactly same information is available with respect to point b so output pin has delays and transition time with respect to each input and that data comes from where standard cell library yes so these are the combination timing as we have seen it. So if there is a multiplexer, if there are N gates with four, four inputs, there will be four timing arcs. And let's say if there is a special cell is a combination, but it has two outputs. And out, each output depends on each input. Like if there are two output, two input, then there will be four timing arcs. Got that? Now in case of flip-flop, as you have already understood from my videos during CMOS when I explained the timing concept that there is a setup time, there's a hold time. So in the case of flip-flop, and as you already know, a flip-flop is the one where output uh, input goes to the output on the rising or falling edge of the clock. In this example, it's the rising edge of the clock. So data is already there. But data hasn't gone to Q yet and it just waits for this edge to come. So question is what time what type of timing arcs exist in a flip-flop? So let's look onto the input side. So D input pin. D arrives fine. I will show you in a minute or in the next video, it depends on how much time I take to explain this. There will be a transition time propagated to it. The tool will calculate that. Okay. But for the case of flip-flop, there is additional couple of timing arc. There is a setup time. This signal arrives, okay, you know, not exactly at the edge, but time a little bit before the edge. It needs to be stable. And that required time that it needs to be stable before that is called a setup time. So it's not exactly here. It needs to get stable before that. So a setup constraint is also present in the inside standard cell library. So with respect to pin D, so I just took the extracted the uh, uh, relevant section of the standard cell uh, sample library. I used ChatGPT to give me this so that you can understand the syntax of it. So this pin D has a related pin CK, and it has a timing type is setup rising. Um, and I mean, it can be a rise or it can be a fall, right? Um, so there is a rise constraint and there's a fall constraint. And let's say within rise constraint, it has a lookup table. And the two indices that are used here, it, it, it the setup time at this pin, but depends how much is the transition time on this pin and how much transition time on the CK pins. Now, if you go back in CMOS, you look at the transistor structure of it, you will understand that, why that is the case, why it depends on this pin and this pin and not on that pin, right? So just need to think of there's a setup and exactly same way there is a hold requirement. Hold requirements also has a timing arc with respect at D with respect to CK. And the key factors are the transition time here and here and then it will determine from the lookup table. Okay, is that clear? So on the input size, they can be set up, they can be hold, two timing arcs, two unique. Uh, now, if there is an enable pin, uh, remember in the previous video I mentioned, even an enable pin will have a setup, right? Your your enable pin needs to come within, if it's coming with respect to clock pin, it needs to be enabled, come uh, certain time before the edge. If it changes here, uh, flip flop will not be able to react it properly to that enable pin. So if enable is there, it will also have a setup and hold time. If the reset there, it also has a setup and hold time if it's a synchronous one. Now on the output side, on the output side, it, this Q has a related pin in the library with respect to CK, not with respect to D pin. Now again, if you remember the flip-flop structure, there, there are um two storage elements so door of one master and slave one is closed one is let go to the output so output really depends in the overall scheme on the edge of the clock not the d 
So for example, if D is already available, but you see that D didn't go to the output until here. So you can appreciate here that this, uh, this time here starts at the, at the positive edge clock or the negative edge, depending on So a flip-flop has an input side, which is we call end point. This is where a timing path ends. And this is where a timing path starts. So timing path ends on a setup and hold constraint and timing path starts at Q with respect to delay with respect to CK. And so now this covers pretty much combinational and sequential in all, almost all cases. Now in case of reset or in case of clock getting there will be some uh, different naming but it's pretty much the concept is same. Setup and hold check on the data pins with respect to clock pins. I think that is enough for uh, this video. In the next video, I will start looking into a timing path. Now we are combining everything and how transition time and delays are calculated. So yeah, let's discuss it then. Um, yeah, see you next time. Bye.